Welcome back guys, moving on to the next video, we're now going to be multiplying and dividing radicals. And in general, the rule is, if you have 8 root b, for example, times c root d, what happens is you multiply the coefficients in front, so we have a, c, and then you also multiply the radicals. So remember when we were adding and subtracting, the radicals stayed the same? Well, when we are multiplying or dividing, the radical actually changes. So for example, let's say I got 5 root 3 times 2 root, um, I don't know, 2. Well, 5 times 2 gives us 10, and then 3 times 2 gives us 6, so this would be root 6. And then you would see if you could simplify this further, but root 6 we can't simplify that further. Right, so that's how multiplying works. And then dividing is pretty much the same thing. We'd have a root b over c root d. That would be like a over c. And then inside the radical would be like b over d. Right, so the radical would change as well. But anyways, we're gonna go over a bunch of uh, examples. So I'm not gonna do too many examples here. But these two, you may want to write those down, those are the two general rules. So, starting off with the first one, we got 4 root 2 times 2 root 5. Well, 4 times 2 gives us 8, and then 2 times 5 gives us 10. So 8 root 10 is the final answer. And then root 10, notice that we can't simplify that any further. We got negative 5 root 11 times root 3. Now, if you have a radical by itself, then you want to pretend there's like a 1 in front. So negative 5 times 1 gives us negative 5, and then root 11 times root 3 gives us root 33. And then root 33, we can't simplify that any further. We can't take 33 and divide it by a rootable number, whether that's 4, 9, 16, 25. Root 33, we can't divide. So that there is the final answer. Okay, negative 4 root 2 squared. Well, we can rewrite this as negative 4 root 2 times negative 4 root 2, like that. And then negative 4 times negative 4, that gives us 16. And then root 2 times root 2, that gives us root 4, which is just 2. 16 times 2 gives us 32. So that is the answer. And that's actually another rule that uh, I want to bring up. Whenever you have root a times root a, whenever you're multiplying radicals that are the same, that just equals the number that's inside the radical, right? So in this case, we could have did root 2 times root 2 is just 2 right away. But we multiplied them root 4, and then root 4 is 2. So it's like an extra step there. But whenever you're multiplying the same radicals, just equals whatever that number is inside the radical. So the final answer for number three is 32. I'll write that here. And then now we have negative four root two to the power of three. Okay, so we got to write out negative four root two times negative four root two times negative four root two, like that. Now, multiple ways to do this you can first take the first two brackets, multiply those out, get your expression, then take that expression, multiply it by this, or you can just multiply all three together. So we can go negative four times negative four times negative four, that gives us uh, negative 64, right? Negative four times negative four is 16, 16 times negative four is uh, negative 64. And then root two times root two times root two, 2 times 2 times 2, that gives us 8. But then this root 8, we could simplify further. So we'd have negative 64 root 4 times root 2. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 64 gives us negative 128. And that would be root 2. Root 2, we can't simplify further. Now, if we were to take these two brackets, multiply them out first, we would end up having what we got up here, right? Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 16 times 2 is 32. So we'd have 32 times uh, negative 4 
root 2. Well, 32 times negative 4, that gives us negative 128. And then the root 2 stays the same. All right, so either way, you get the same simplified answer. Another thing I want to mention is that you can actually check these answers in your calculator. So I didn't mention that in the previous videos either, but with radicals, what's nice is, uh, for example, in number one, you could take four root two times two root five, plug that into your calculator. Usually the calculator will give you a decimal. Some calculators actually simplify it for you, which is nice. But uh, most calculators will give you a decimal write down that decimal number, and then take your final answer, 8 root 10, see what decimal value that gives you, and if it gives you the same decimal, then you know you're correct. And you can do these as well. You can put this in brackets, negative 4 root 2 squared, see if it gives you 32. So you can always check your answer with radicals with a calculator, which is nice. So uh, negative 4 root 2 to the power of 3, that's negative 128 root 2. Okay, moving on to the next one. We got 7 root 6 over root 2. Now, as I said, if there's a radical by itself, there's like a 1 in front. So 7 divided by 1, that gives us 7. And then root 6 divided by root 2, that gives us root 3. So that is the final answer. Root 3, we can't simplify further. Same thing here, we got 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Root 10 divided by root 2 gives us root 5. Can't simplify the root 5 any further. And then finally, number 7, I rewrote up here. This one's a little bit more unique because notice that root 12, we can't really divide it by root 42. But when you get something like this, you can actually treat radicals as like fractions. So let's say we have 12 over 42. So I just rewrote these two without the radicals. If we simplify this fraction, what would we get? This would end up being, uh, we could divide both sides, both the numerator, I mean, and denominator by what? 6. So if we divide the top by 6, that gives us 2. 42 divided by 6 gives us 7. So we can actually rewrite this as negative 16 uh, root 2 over 4 root 7, like that. So you could take these, treat them like a fraction, simplify the fraction, and then get that. Why does that work? Well, if we rewrite the radicals again, we got root 12 over root 42. Well, root 12, we could split up into root 6 times root 2, and then root 42, we could split up into root 6 times root 7. And then notice the root 6s cancel out. So we're just left with a root 2 over root 7. Right? So that's how that works. So took this, simplified it to this here. And now negative 16 divided by 4 gives us negative 4. That would be at the top. Then we'd have root 2. And then the root 7 can't do anything about that. So 2 divided by 7, we can't simplify that further. So you can leave it like this. Another thing you can do, a lot of times they don't like having radicals in the denominator, so you can rationalize this. So sometimes certain teachers want students to rationalize, so this is how you do that. You multiply this by root seven over root seven, because it's like multiplying it by one, right? Root seven over root seven is one. And what that does is it gets rid of that radical in the denominator. So we'd have negative 4 root 2 times root 7. That gives us negative 4 root 14, because there's like a 1 in front. So negative 4 times 1 gives us negative 4 root 2 times root 7 root 14. And then root 7 times root 7, that just gives us 7. Right? So this and this are the same. If you plug both of these into your calculator, you'll get the same decimal value. And then you could check it by plugging in the original as well, making sure that is the same decimal value. So some teachers allow you to leave your answer like this. Some teachers don't like a radical in the denominator. They want you to rationalize. The way you rationalize is multiply the numerator and the denominator by that radical in the denominator because it's like you're multiplying it by one and then that gets rid of it 
notice how we just end up with a seven at the bottom. So either this or that, that is the final simplified answer.